The KwaZulu-Natal provincial government says the passing of Prince Mangosuthu Butelezi marks the end of an era. The 95-year-old Butelezi passed away at his home in Kwabindangene, Yaulundi, in the early hours of the morning. Our Premier Nomusa Dubengube and uh, MECs in the province will be visiting the Butelezi home today. In a statement, the provincial government says Butelezi was a politician of international repute, had a photographic memory of events and was a remarkable storyteller until the end. Well, to discuss the life and times of Prince Butelezi, we're now joined by Professor Begi Mgomezulu, political analyst. Prof. Um, Begi, good afternoon. Thank you for your time with us here on the SABC. Uh, thank you for having me, my sister, and good afternoon to your viewers. We're paying our last respects, tributes pouring in, reflecting on his life and times, which seems to have been controversial and complex but impactful. He was entrusted as an acting president of the country, led the IFP, was a cabinet minister, helped to deliver South Africa's negotiated settlement. In your view, what has been, you know, his impactful role as a leader pre and post democracy in South Africa? Uh, thank you very much for your question. First of all, uh, I must pass my condolences to the Butelezi family. Uh, to the Ngata Freedom Party, uh, to the province of KwaZulu-Natal, uh, to the national government, more especially the president of the country, because he served uh, at the National Assembly, and of course to the entire continent and the global community. Ngos Mangosutub Telezi had many identities. As uh, you indicated uh, uh, at the beginning of this uh, clip, uh, you, you stated that, that uh, one of the things that he did, of course, is that uh, when he joined uh, the University of Forte, in 1948, he subsequently joined the ANC Youth League in 1949, and then immediately thereafter, when he left for uh, under very controversial circumstances, of course, uh, he then started working for the government. And then in 1953, that is when he was convinced by uh, um, uh, the, 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 those who were associated with him, including Inkos Albert Lutuli, and in fact, um, uh, Walter Sesolo, that he must assume the position of being the king or the chief of uh, the Butelezi clan, a position that he took even though he had wanted to be a lawyer. So there are a number of things that we can say. But to answer your question directly, at the national government level, uh, Butelezi joined uh, the, the national government in 1994 and is in fact the longest serving uh, member of uh, the legislature, having occupied different positions. You will also recall that he went to the Guinness Book of Record for having presented the longest speech uh, more than any other person, even though he was not the president. He is also um, one of the people uh, who has made history by serving as acting president more than any cabinet, more than any, any cabinet member. So we can talk from sunrise to sunset, but the reality of the matter is, if we say that uh, uh, the giant tree has fallen, would not be uh, saying that figuratively, but will be saying that uh, uh, in a more practical sense. That is exactly what has happened. Prof, thank you for those sentiments. Let me bring, you know, some of the other aspects that come to the fore as we highlight his legacy, the uh, creation of the Ngonyama Trust. Perhaps in hindsight, w what that means for, for South Africa some of the question marks around it as well, where some accused um, the, you know, the Trust Act of, of it being a bribe, bribe rather to, to pacify Butelezi. Help us understand in the current socioeconomic conditions of South Africa today. Uh, there are two ways to answer that question. First of all, uh, Butelezi should be credited yep. for the nine provinces that we have today. You recall that uh, during the Cortesa talks, uh, there was a discussion that South Africa must be a unitary state, and Butelezi wanted it to be a federal state, like uh, the countries like Nigeria, for example. Then, of course, uh, uh, he was a, a, a soloist in that regard. The majority of the people wanted South Africa to be a, a, a unitary state, which is why then it ended up that way. But to meet him halfway, there was then consensus reached that uh, we must have provinces. They started off being um, um, a four, and then later on there were six, and then currently we have nine. So it should be credited for that. On the issue of Ngonyama Trust, during Kotesa talks, Ingos Mangosutu Telezi said that uh, his party, uh, Ingata Freedom Party, was not going to contest the first uh, democratic election in 1994 uh, if, uh, if um, government or in fact if uh, the discussion did not um, have a place for the Zulu Kingdom. So in that context, then, 
uh, the, the discussion ended up saying that uh, there must be Ingonyama Trust because he wanted the Zulu Kingdom to have a land set aside for the Zulu people, benefiting Zulu people. Of course, that is what happened. But then lately, we've had a debate as to whether Ingonyama Trust is benefiting the intended recipients. That is an ongoing debate, depending on where on how one looks at it. But the reality of the matter is, uh, KwaZulu Natal, and in this case, the Zulu Kingdom, is the only Z kingdom that uh, has land set aside for its own people. How it is managed is a debate that we can have uh, some other time, but the reality is that uh, we have Ngonyama Trust because of him, and therefore it should be credited for that as well. No, absolutely, Prof. And perhaps as we fast forward to 2023, perhaps we could highlight his role as the Amazulu um, traditional prime minister. What's coming to the fore there? His role did come under fire from some senior members of the royal family. Um, perhaps also the rift between the king and um, the, the, prime, the traditional prime minister. What have you observed on that front? Yeah, there is something uh, that uh, uh, comes out uh, in that context. One is that uh, during the reign uh, of uh, the late king, King Kutuil Zolitini, uh, there were talks that uh, there was an attempt to lure uh, the king, the late king, uh, towards, uh, towards Ingata Freedom Party. Uh, you recall also that at some point there was a unit called uh, the ZP, Zulu Police, and they were the, one, uh, the, the ones who were uh, settled with the responsibility to protect the late king, King Kutul Zolitin. And then when the ANC was unbent, there was a struggle between the ANC and the IFP as to who should be given the responsibility to protect the then king. Some were saying that the South African police should do the job. Others were saying that, no, it's okay for the uh, Zulu police to do the job. And in fact, there were some issues that happened there. Then we fast forward to the current king, uh, the late um, uh, Mangosutu Teles was instrumental in making sure that uh, King Misu Zulu ascended to the throne. Uh, he was instrumental in a number of uh, um, uh, respects. One, using his position as a traditional prime minister of the Zulu nation, but then also uh, using his position as the prince, uh, given the fact that uh, uh, his mother, uh, Princess Makoko, comes from the royal family. So he played a number of roles. Uh, of course, he had already uh, exited the stage as the leader of the IFP. So he wasn't uh, performing uh, his duties as the leader of the IFP because there is a new leader in, in, in uh, uh, Velenko St. Labesa. But some people were of the view that uh, he was also not um, detached from the IFP, as though, uh, I mean, although he was uh, uh, responsible for uh, the Zulu Kingdom. But then lastly, one thing that has come out is that uh, his relationship with uh, the reigning king, that is King Misu Zulu, uh, has been not a smooth one. Uh, one of the reasons being, of course, uh, uh, this uh, Ingonyama Trust, when the new leadership, or the, the chairperson in particular, uh, was appointed, uh, Ngozi Mongosutu Ptelis was not happy about that. And it didn't mean his words on that, he was not happy as to why only him knows or the king maybe might know why that was the case. But then, uh, of course, uh, I would say that his passing uh, is leaving a void in the sense that there are issues that are not concluded yet in as far as the Zulu royal, um, the royal House is concerned. And then, of course, given developments that are taking place in the IFP, there are also questions as to what is going to happen with the party. So there are a number of things that uh, uh, will be watching the space to see what happens, given the fact that I mentioned last time that uh, he was the clue that held people together, be it in the Zulu nation, or be it in the IFP, or be it in parliament, because he played a critical role there, of course, when some of the people were acting irrationally, then would calm them down and say, even if you disagree with the president, but then do that respectfully. Of course, as someone of Zulu upbringing, he knew that the respect counts more than anything else. Prof, speaking about issues not concluded, Perhaps you could also weigh in on the ANC and Nkata's relationship. Um, we're obviously looking at the negotiated settlements, perhaps even the 80s and 90s, 90s rather, um, with the uh, killing fields. But also, you know, in this um, present dispensation, what's been reflected on that front? I know re reconciliation was also a theme that, that he largely echoed towards the end. You know, Michelle, I'm pained by the fact that Nkosma Ngosu Tutelezi passed on before uh, the issue between him and the ANC could be resolved. 
uh, I was privileged to have been invited uh, to uh, the launch of uh, the Mangosoto uh, Foundation, uh, which was held at the ICC, uh, where uh, then President uh, uh, Obasanjo uh, gave a, 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 I mean, was a keynote speaker. Uh, because one of the things that uh, Ngos Mangosoto Tennis has been uh, saying uh, for quite a long time is that uh, his wish is that uh, his issue with the, uh, I mean, his uh, issues with the ANC should be resolved before he passes on. And that is simply because, as I said earlier on, in 1949, he joined um, uh, the ANC Youth League when he was at Forte. And then, of course, the formation of Inkata in 1975 did not happen behind the back of the ANC. It got uh, the support, and in fact, it got uh, uh, a green light from the likes of Oliver Tambo. And the ANC, there was an exile. And until 1979, Ngozi Mangosutu used to fly to uh, Zambia uh, to report to the leadership of the ANC as to how things were happening. Until 1979, when Mbutelezi held, I mean, led a 17 member delegation uh, to have talks with uh, um, uh, Oliver Tambo in the leadership in exile. So that has not been concluded. So now that he has passed on, it leaves a big question as to how the ANC will handle that matter and how the, the IFP will handle that matter because he had wanted to have closure on that matter because he formed the IFP uh, with the blessing of the ANC, which means that uh, even some people who joined the, the IFP, by the way, who were members of the ANC, did so because they thought they were joining the ANC, uh, in the, which was uh, in disguise. Uh, uh, because they, they, that is what the, the IFP was supposed to, the goal that it was supposed to achieve. So there are a number of questions that will remain unanswered, which the ANC and the IFP will have to answer. Well, Prof, to condense a lifetime of 95 years is a tall ask, um, you know, in, in one day. And so perhaps as we conclude this segment of, of the conversation, I'd like to get your personal sentiments. Were you privy to meet him? Uh, what are some of your fondest memories? What, what legacy is he going to, to leave for you? What has he encompassed for you? You know, in the language of cricket, I would say Nkosmango Sutuptelis was, was an all-rounder. Uh, if you met him in person, he was a polite person down to earth. I remember, for example, uh, uh, at some point we had a conference at the ICC in Devon, and uh, we happened to be in the same commission. He never addressed me by the first name, nor did he call me Mgomizuru, but he would call me Lagata. That is how respectful, uh, respectful he, he was. Old as he was, but he, he still accorded me respect. That is the kind of a person he was if you met him outside of the realm of politics. But then if he was addressing the masses, then he would be someone totally different. Then when he went to parliament, of course, he would try to calm the situation. So he had all these identities, and then depending on which one he wanted to emphasize on, then would identify him with that. Myself, personally, in 2019, there was an issue uh, uh, where he, after the IFP had uh, postponed its uh, conference uh, at the 11th hour, where I made some comments, uh, some of which he didn't embrace, and then after that, with lengthy discussions, where he was sending me letters and I was sending him letters. And then we were, uh, luckily, eventually we found each other. And then I asked you to interview him uh, on a paper that I was writing on the 1982 land deal, which I was going to present in the US. And he gave me all the answers that I needed. Unfortunately, while I was in the US, uh, his wife uh, passed on. Then I had to write a letter. Uh, of condolence, basically saying that uh, uh, I'm sorry for what has happened. So he's the kind of a person uh, who would move with the flow, as it were. If the situation demanded that he, would, he should be harsh, he was harsh. But then if it demanded that he should be a respectful of a person, he was that. So basically he was all in one. That is why I would say he was an all-rounder. Or well, in, even in the li in literal terms, I would say he was a round character. He had everything in one person and then would just emphasize whatever I wanted to emphasize at any given time. Niabonga Lagada. Thank you, Prof. Begum Komezulu, for your time with us, political analyst Professor Begum Komezulu.